Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Happy Thursday. Just wanted to sort of conclude these points that we've been making the whole week. The idea of desire, the idea of our eyes in the diet. The CEO who just didn't want, or, or, or who wanted more positivity to see and to bring in in order because that'll help him. And then the, the story of my friend and the different things that you watch. But let's sort of like close it out a little bit now. Since mimetic desire is a force, let's use it for our advantage. Let's use it for our advantage, right? We know that we're wired to want to be like the things around us. We know we're wired to take in images that are before us, process them, and then live with them. That's sort of the facts we get. So what do we do? So, you know how like when people start dieting, sometimes they'll go to a nutritionist and they'll say, you know what you do? Don't, don't change yet. I know it's hard. Don't change. You know what I want you to do? I want you to keep a log. I want you to start to be aware of how much you eat. Don't, don't stop eating. Just log it. Nah, I can't. Nah, nah, nah. Just try. And you're like, well, what's, the, what's the point? Like, Just try. You log it and you're like, all right, you know, 215, candy bar. And you're like, why did I do that for today? Because I was bored. At the end of the day, you look at your log and you go, holy cow, I ate a lot. I wonder why I can't lose weight. I keep on picking. And just, the, just the recognition of what I see, of what I eat, just the recognition of what I eat allows me to realize that I'm putting a lot of negative calories into my system. Or as they say, empty calories. I think that's nutrition speak, which is accurate. And then they'll look at you and go, listen, you're eating this, just eat that. Right? You're hungry for, for you, you, you're munching on this, eat bran flakes. You're munching, you, 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 you love this, have that. And then they, this is how they do it. It's brilliant. They get you to keep your doing and make healthier, more meaningful calories. And then at some point, they go, wait, do you really need to eat 17 things by, by noon? You can't really, really, you don't need that. You're not an Olympic athlete. Like, you just sit at your desk. Like, you don't really need to consume 3,000 carbs by lunch. All right, you want to take it down a drop? This, that. Okay. And slowly, 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 you adapt to a clean, necessary diet. And then all of a sudden, like magically, your your weight comes off. You feel better. You sleep better. I want you to, we need to do this for our eyes. Super hard. Our eyes eat, see more than our, our mouth eats, right? Fine. But let's try. Forget like walking down the street and seeing things. I'm talking about like where what we watch, what we choose to do with our free time, what we choose to put our heads in. Who do we associate with? When I go somewhere, who do I go with? When I am invited somewhere, do I go? What's the impact on me? How do I feel when I leave a room and all I've done is participated? Right? Mimetic desire is so powerful that it almost demands that we take a look at who do we associate with? Who are the people that we put around us? And what impact are they having whether we realize it or not? The famous adage, you are the average of your five closest friends. We're starting to see the science behind this, whether that's five or who cares. The point is that the people that I associate with create a desire that I can't stop. So if I'm constantly associating with these people, that's why I always feel this way. Now we tell this to our kids, but we don't tell this to ourselves. Who do I spend time with? Where do I go when I have free time? Where, what do I see when I need to read or watch something? What do I turn on? Do I spend time in wisdom? Or do I spend time in entertainment nothing wrong with some entertainment but it's an empty calorie 
So when you see all the empty calories, you go, did I need that much time in entertainment? Like, okay, I needed to like chill, but like, did I need to chill that much? It's a lot of empty calories that my eyes took in. Can I put something in that rank? Could I have switched out this thing I watched for this thing that I watched? This thing that I read while flipping through four million things on the train versus this thing that I read, which actually was a book or actually was something of meaning? Where do I spend my... Who, who do I... That group, that person that I always wanted to get close to, can I get close to them? Can I go to a class? Can I hang out with the right people? Can I get involved in something? One of the most transformative moments of my life was when after college, when I was really uninspired. I went to Israel, I came back, it just, I didn't train, and I went to this place called Hask, the Hebrew Academy of Special Children, and I spent the summer taking care of special children, and it wasn't the doing the special children and being, that was great, but that wasn't it. For me, I was around college kids, all choosing to spend the summer taking care of special children. I never, I mean, maybe a couple, but I, I'm all, I'm all, I've almost never had a group of people that I've been so impacted by. They didn't teach me anything. They didn't, and not formally, I mean formally. They didn't, I didn't go to a class. I didn't take notes. My eyes spent the summer immersed in people my age and older who have been, who take, who are taking care of special needs. I spend time with some of the greatest people in the world and some of the, 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 the campers were even greater. That was the most impactful summer that I can remember as a kid. Much more impactful than the summers that I had where I was in a camp, sleepaway camp, and ball, and color war, and sports. And... Because my eyes were able to see models that pushed the best out of me, hopefully. Are we doing that? Is that in our diet? Do we have a diet of being around people that inspire us live or online? Do we have a diet of engaging in material that push us to be greater? Do we have a diet in going to places? This is momentum so I can, you know, clearly we, when we go to Israel, you know how many guys when they get there, you know how many guys when they get there, middle-aged guys, they just can't believe that they're in the country. They're seeing all these sights. They're connecting to depths, and they all, like, almost everyone's like, I wasn't supposed to come. I was going to go to Puerto Vallarta. I was going to go right to the Caribbean. I had a trip to Puerto Rico. But I came here. I, I can't even describe the difference. I'm like, yeah, your eyes are engaged in depth. Doesn't mean you can't go do what you got to do, but put depth on the list. The circles that I that I sit with, do I have to be with those people that always make me feel like I'm less? Do I have to be in that room? I've done this before in my life, where at some point I'm like, do I have to be sitting in this room where every single time we talk, there's something negative? There are people like this, where you sit with the group and every time you sit down, if you're paying attention, someone else is getting rocked. Obviously not in the room because if they're all, they're all anti, they're all non-confrontationalists. You ever get around these people? The group is always ragging on somebody. Your eyes is digesting negativity, negativity, negativity. In Hebrew, this is called Lashon Hara, evil speech. Yeah, that's what happens. You leave, and then you see the world in a negative way. You're around people. that Everything's a problem. And then you hear yourself say, I can't believe this isn't right. Where did it come from? It's mimetic. It sounds insane, but so does locking your food sounds insane. But ask the person who's been dieting and said, logging my food was the beginning of my, my, my culinary freedom. We don't got to put it on a piece of paper, unless you do. That'd be great if you could. But just to be mindful that everything we look at is impacting us. And every time we see something, it's changing our desires. It's changing our emotionality. It's changing our whole mix-up of, of how we see the world. Just because we're seeing this or that. Just because we're running with this circle or that circle. We can't change ourselves. We can change the environment. 
and maybe not dramatically, but even incrementally, even incrementally we can change. You may be related to some person. So even if you figure out a way to not be as impacted, you may be in school with a person, even if you could figure out a way to create some more friends, you may live next to a person, even if you could figure out a way to get involved, to meet new people, to, in your free time, read things that inspire, watch things that inspire, get involved in things that bring light. We think we're doing it for them, we're doing it for us. Because our eyes are sending in so much positivity that's creating all these new desires for growth and for giving and for greatness that feel natural to us, but they're not natural. Obviously, they're God-given, but they're, 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 you, you, you put them in your eyes and your eyes send them to your to your emotions, and your emotions have this thing called manic desire, and then it spits it out into how you feel and what you want. We focus on what we see. Now we're using those desires to drive us to want the things that we're supposed to want. All right, we'll talk about this with God's help. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. With God's help, can we see you next week? Have a great weekend. Shabbat shalom. Living on a lifeline The world doesn't ever seem to change Looking for the sunshine But you're caught up in the rain It's like your eyes Are wide open but you cannot see You're watching life Pass you by like one, two, three Walking in destruction The winds of life Blur your vision All the devastation Forever feels like you're on the run It's time No one else can set you free inside.